I want to start by reminding our audience what specifically the president said yesterday when he was asked about election meddling. Watch. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. Okay, well, let's just start with he doesn't see a reason why it would be as if Vladimir Putin wouldn't have a motivator. And we need to remind the audience they had a two-hour private meeting. Steve, your reaction. Well, let's put aside for a second his comportment up there. It, it's the musings of an imbecile. Uh, Vladimir Putin looks across to the other podium, and what he sees standing there is a fool um, who's doing Vladimir Putin's bidding. Uh, Trump is what the Russians call a useful idiot, someone in service to the Russian Federation, either unwitting or wittingly. Um, now, let's talk about what Trump did, uh, not about what motives are, uh, what his comportment was, but for the first time in the history of the United States, you have an American president who is absolutely unwilling to defend the country from a hostile foreign power that has attacked it. He is faithless to his oath of office. And when we watch Jeff Flake and you watch Olympia Snow and, a, and a Ben Sass and a, and a couple of others, what we know for sure is that the Congress under this Republican control is as faithless to American ideals, to the Constitution and the country as Donald Trump is. And so Jeff Flake and Snow and Sass and all the rest of them can say disgraceful, bad, terrible, but they actually have power to do something about it. This is an extraordinary moment, and the Congress is absolutely unwilling to exert any level of oversight over this president. And so Sass and Snow and Flake have it in their power to cut a deal with the Democrats to put subpoena power into the hands of responsible senators, many of whom may be members of the Democratic Party, but to remove Mitch McConnell from power, who's up to this, up to his eyeballs as well. As he was informed before the election that the Russians were meddling, by President Obama and refused to take any action on it as well. But, but we will never, and I mean never again, see an American president uh, perform so weakly, so incompetently on the world stage next to an adversary. Just an extraordinarily debasement of the office, a personal disgrace for Trump, and a national humiliation for the United States. Well, we will see it again if President Trump gets reelected. And to that exact point, Evan, all day long yesterday, I keep hearing from Republicans, this is a sad day for America. It doesn't have to be a sad day for America. It could be a self-inflicted, devastating day for President Trump's legacy. But in terms of America, this is an opportunity for, from a bipartisan perspective, political leaders to stand up and say, this is not what America is. This is not what patriotism is. To be a patriot would be to vigorously defend your country's values against an adversary or a detractor, otherwise known as Vladimir Putin. The president did the opposite yesterday. So today could be a great day for America to unite and defend what this country is because he just sold us down the river. We were saying the exact same thing 11 months ago after Charlottesville where Donald Trump said, well, there were good people on both sides because there obviously are good neo-Nazis. Everybody knows that. Of course not. But I have to disagree with my friend Steve who did not go far enough. <laughs> Forget subpoena power. I think he should go out and be censured by the Congress. This is a president whose ego knows no bounds. And if you really want to send a message to him as Congress, send a censure that says you have been repudiated by the legislative body for not doing your job and for embarrassing the country, not standing up for our allies. Remember, to last week, a British citizen died yeah. as a result of the fallout of the chemical attack on a former Soviet spy who's now living in Britain. And that... Theresa May, you have to believe, was begging Trump to bring up. He didn't stand up for our allies. And I have to question whether or not President Trump truly understands 
why America is a great country. He constantly attacks America. There's so many problems with America. There's a deep state. It's a rigged witch hunt. It's our fault that we have a bad relationship with Russia. My God, he doesn't ever explain why America is an exceptional nation, why it is a beacon of hope throughout the world for people who are oppressed, fighting, bleeding, and dying to have the freedoms we take for granted. The president can't, and he never will, because he's not an imbecile. He just cares about himself, and he deserves a censure. I need to remind our audience, Evan Siegfried is a Republican, yep. and until about 11 days ago, so was Steve Schmidt. Okay, Evan slightly disagreed with Steve. I slightly disagree with Evan. This is not the same as Charlottesville. Christine, Charlottesville and every other time we've looked at the president right. do something over the line, you could draw it to, well, this serves his base. This helps him with voters. What he did yesterday does not serve one, no part of president's right. base. Show me anyone at a Trump rally who's going, bring it on, Pootie, you're my right. boy. Only Trump. That's clear. It's clear. I mean, you know, as twisted and horrible as it is, you could draw those lines in Charlottesville, right? As terrible as it is. But now you cannot. No, unless, and this goes to the core of the president, it's just, this is just about him. It, look, the, look at the answer Putin gave to the question, do you have anything on <laughs> President Trump or his family? He, Trump says he answered it and said, no, he did not say no. He had the perfectly timed grimace and snicker and then began speaking about how he didn't even know Trump was in the country when he was a businessman, which is actually factually incorrect, because he was unable to meet with Trump when they were there from his universe and sent Trump a gift, and an aide spoke to Trump saying how disappointed Putin was to not be able to meet with him. So in his non-denial denial, he lied. So something exists out there in the world that is relevant to Russia and relevant to Trump, and Trump is going to lick Putin's boots as much as he has to to keep that from coming out. Whatever that something is has nothing to do with the health of the American no. people. Uh, Steve Schmidt, Washington Post uh, sort of has a TikTok, and in it they say that President Trump had briefing material a hundred years long, laying out what our tough posture should be. <clears throat> According to the Post, that piece was largely ignored by the president. He didn't even read it in its entirety, and what he did yesterday was specifically counter to the plan he was advised on. So if Trump's own team is not on the same page, if Dan Coats went out and said, nope, this is what I think, and I'll say it again, where does that leave the administration? Do guys like Dan Coats have to go home? If Dan Coats has a shred of personal dignity, he will resign. Uh, and he will resign in a loud way and communicate to the American people the danger of what we saw yesterday. Look, it's nothing new to learn that this president revels in his ig ignorance, his unpreparedness. Uh, he famously doesn't read. He doesn't know anything about history, uh, doesn't know much about anything. Uh, what he knows is his gut, his ego, uh, his sense of entitlement. Uh, so he's sitting there yesterday. Uh, with slobbering servility uh, at the bended, on bended knee at the feet of Vladimir Putin, the Russian autocrat. Again, just an extraordinary scene, the likes of which we've never seen in the history of the United States. We've never seen a weaker performance on the international stage by a president of the United States. And of course, this all follows his provocations, his attacks, his sundering of the Western alliance at the NATO summit. What we're seeing here is a president praising Vladimir Putin, not defending the United States from Russian meddling, interference, attacks on our election process, while at the same time attacking the British prime minister, attacking the German uh, chancellor, attacking the Canadian prime minister. He is making the world profoundly more dangerous by saying to Vladimir Putin, essentially, you can do whatever it is you would like to do in the world. There's no opposition from the office of president of the United States, from the United States of America. Just astonishing. But is that the right move? If you're thinking about American safety, do you think the Dan Coats of the world should resign? Or do you feel better knowing he's there and actually doing his work. I mean, yesterday, the Kremlin translation, when President Trump did an interview, when Putin, excuse me, did an interview with Fox, they said the network run by the president. 
That's the translation. You've got the former head of Fox, Bill Shine, now working inside the White House. People say in a tongue-in-cheek way, Sean Hannity is an unofficial advisor to the president. So do you really want the Dan Coats of the world to leave knowing that they're actually doing their job? I understand you want Dan Coats to be the Elliot Richardson who stands up for moral authority and resigns in protest over the actions of the president. But who replaces him? Yeah. And it could be a Trump loyalist who has the intellectual capacity of a potato like the Bill uh, Richard, or not Bill Richardson, pardon me, Bill Mitchells of the Twitterverse and the Jacob Walls, and they're going to go out and follow the Trump playbook and push whatever it is, which would have an even more chilling effect on our national security but infrastructure. But the truth is he's not listening to Dan Coats. Yes. Right? I mean, he, he, Dan and his people pulled everything he needed together to, to have done a far, far, far better job than he did and not to throw America under the bus. So I, you know, think Dan Coates, how can he stand to be in a place But he we... manages the overall thing. And so if, why don't we still have a competent manager who's willing to go out and put because, out statements because without that's clearing what, the White you know, House? Gar it's Gary a Cohn safety be issue. Gary Cohn not... believed that. H.R. McMaster right. believed that. And then the day comes when, when you it's say... too much. The president it's... should fire him. And that way he'll be a better martyr if that way it goes down. Steve? If not, you should stay. Listen, I, I think principled resignations, we don't see enough of them. Yeah, and the line here is very, very clear in this administration. You're either on Team America or you're on Team Putin. It's that simple, right? When you look at this situation right now, you have an American president who is doing Vladimir Putin's bidding, full stop, period. He is attacking the Western alliance. He is attacking NATO. He is doing grave damage to America's standing in the world. By the way, none of this should come as a revelation. Fox News has functioned as Trump's state media going on for a year and a half. On an hourly basis, Fox News spews forth complete and total nonsense, the equivalent of state media propaganda to unwitting, unsuspecting, some of them decent people out there who are constantly lied to, constantly gaslighted by this president. What we saw at this news conference yesterday was the president of the United States gaslighting the American people about Vladimir Putin and his intentions towards the country. I think that the director of national intelligence, who was humiliated and embarrassed for him to stand up and to say, this president is hostile to facts. This president is hostile to the intelligence services of this country. I can't explain to you why. I wish I knew why, but it is what it is. And when you see these administration officials, I have no doubt that one day we'll see legions of them. Well, this is the heroic story right. of my struggle behind the scenes to make Trump do but the, the right thing. But, but the, the American people deserve to the know base is already what's going saying that Donald on, Trump won. what's happening, and they deserve to hear it from high government officials. I agree. They, the base will absolutely turn on whomever comes out and stands up for moral principle. So They're what? saying that Donald but Trump has already won. I mean, really and figuratively, it doesn't mean he understands American values, but to his base, he's the greatest but thing to happen what? in this country since it's the Declaration of Independence. Listen, 40% of the country, 40% of the country may be in thrall to Donald Trump. 40% of the country may have signed on to a cult of personality. Here's the deal. It's not enough. There is a majority right. of Americans that stand in strong and fierce opposition to this president. The next election in this country is November. Between then and now, responsible and serious leaders of government, the snows, the flakes, the Corkers, two of the three who are leaving any, anyway, they should take action to protect the country from this ignoramus president before real tragedy unfolds out of these type of summits where he weakens the alliances that have kept the world prosperous and safe, and he is encouraging Vladimir Putin, saying, if you move in the Baltics, if you move in Ukraine, if you move anywhere, you won't face opposition from the United States. It's not only tragic, it's dangerous. And when we look down the road, 
There is nothing but blood and misery that comes from this type of stuff. All right, we have to leave it there. I just want to remind our audience where the president continues to say he's my competition and, and, and puts Vladimir Putin on the same level, on the same stage. Russia is not our peer. They are not our competitor. Their economy is the size of the state of New York. They are, the, they are our 30th trading partner. 30th. You know how teeny tiny that is? That's how teeny tiny Vladimir Putin is. And Trump has made him a big bad bad guy.